Hi everyone. So in chapter five, we are going to switch gears a little bit and talk about a different approach to managing our products called cost, volume, profit, CVP relationships. Some things we need to state right up front when it comes to cost, volume, profit analysis is one, we assume selling price is constant when we're looking at this. Two, costs are what we call linear and can be accurately divided into variable cost per unit and fixed cost in total elements. So it's a line. In multi-product companies, the sales mix is constant. So if you're always making 60% of this product and 40% of this product, that remains constant over the time being looked at. And in manufacturing companies, inventories do not change. Units produced will equal units sold. So we've got to keep these key assumptions in mind as we're going through. So what will we be learning? Well, the first learning objective, we will be, be able to explain how changes in activity affect our contribution margin, contribution profit, and net operating income. So let's take a look at that. The basics of cost volume profit analysis. We start with our contribution income statement. Remember how we determine that. This is helpful to managers in judging the impact on profits of changes in selling price, the cost of the product to make it, or the volume that's actually being sold. The emphasis here is on cost behavior. Contribution margin is always determined by taking sales minus variable expenses. And we talked about that back in chapter one. So the contribution margin is used first to cover fixed expenses and whatever's left over will remain as net operating income. So we could see there from our contribution income statement, if you sell 500 bikes for this company, the sales will be 250,000. The total variable, variable expenses related to those 500 bicycles, 150, leading to a contribution margin of 100,000. The fixed expenses of, for this company are 80,000. So net operating income, $20,000, assuming the sale of 500 bicycles. What we can do now is determine the contribution margin per bike or per unit. When you have sales, variable expenses, and contribution margin can also be expressed on a per unit basis. So if the racing bike sells for 500 per unit, 500 bikes were sold, $250,000 was the total sales revenue. Divide the 250,000 by the 500 bikes. That'll give you a sale price of $500 per bike. You can do the same with the variable expenses. Remember, variable expenses will change or increase when each new bike is sold. So it is a cost per bike that only changes when another bike is sold. So if you take 150,000 variable expenses in total divided by the 500 bikes, you're going to, going to get variable expenses of $300 each. So that means our contribution margin or profit per bike before covering fixed expenses is $200. So each time an additional bike is sold, $200 will be added. Each month, this company must generate at least $80,000 in contribution margin to reach a profit of zero or where their net operating income would be zero. Why? Because the fixed 
Expenses are 80,000. So how many units or how many bikes do they have to sell in order for their profit to be zero? What's the minimum amount of bikes? And that would be 400. The point at which the contribution margin is 80,000. If we know the contribution margin per bike is 200, divide that into the 80,000 and that's how many bicycles. 400 we would have to sell. So if RBC, the company, sells one more bike, now the operating income or profit will increase by $200 for each bike. So if you took the 401 times 500 sale price, you get $200,500. Then take the variable expense per unit of 300 times the 401 bikes, will give you total vary expenses of 12300 will lead you to a contribution margin of 80200 fixed expenses are 80000 your operating income then would be $200 so the question comes in here do we really need to prepare an income statement to estimate profits when we have sales at a certain amount. Do we really need to do that? And the answer is no. What we need to do is simply multiply the number of units sold above break even by the contribution margin per unit. And that will tell us how much income is left or operating income. So if we sell 430 bikes, the break even is 400 bikes. So those 30 additional bikes times the contribution margin of 200 will give us $6,000 of profit. So we need to express this in an equation. Profit equals your sales minus variable expenses, which would be your contribution margin, minus fixed expenses. And we've already seen that demonstrated in our contribution income statement. And there it is again. When sales are 401 bikes times $500 sale price, subtract your variable expenses of 401 bikes times 300 variable expense per bike, minus your fixed expenses of 80,000, your profit is $200. So now we've translated the income statement, the contribution statement, I'm sorry, the contribution statement into a formula. And we're gonna keep breaking it down to show you how we could use formulas just from this basic one to give us more information and a quick update to how profit could be affected if sale price changes or cost or the volume. So when a company only has one product, we can further refine this equation as follows. Quantity sold times sale price is sales, so Q times P. Quantity sold times a variable cost equals variable expenses, so profit equals P times Q minus V times Q minus fixed expenses. If we fill in our equation with the dollar amounts, you can see the result. So just proving to you this equation works. Now, it is often useful then to express the simple profit equation in terms of the unit contribution margin as follows. So remember how we determine the contribution margin per unit. What did we do? We took the selling price per unit minus the variable expense per unit. So P minus V. If you look in our equation, we have P times Q minus V times Q. Hmm. Well, we could pull out 
the P minus V and just say the unit contribution margin times the quantity minus fixed expenses. So we're refining this equation because we understand these relationships. Or you can look at it if you're trying to see this. Remember, the common variable there is Q, right? Pull the Q out and in parentheses, P minus V. And we know P minus V is the unit contribution margin. So now we could take the profit equals the unit contribution margin, so the $200 times the quantity sold, 401, minus the 80,000 in fixed expenses. So an even quicker way. So we're going from that income statement that we introduced a few slides ago and refining it into equations. Still get the same profit. Okay, so that's our first objective, taking the income statement and starting to form this relationship through an equation to do calculations in cost, volume, profit analysis. In Learning Objective 2, we're going to prepare and interpret a CVP graph and a profit graph. Ooh, this is fun. Okay, so we're going back. We're taking a look at now the relationships among revenue cost, profit, and volume, and how it's expressed graphically. And we're going to prepare a CVP graph using information from Racing Bicycle and how they developed their contribution margin income statements when they sold zero products, 200 products, so their sales would be 100,000, variable expenses 60,000, 200 times 300, dollars gives us a contribution of 40,000 200 times the $200 contribution margin fixed expenses are 80,000 that would lead them to a loss of $40,000 when they sold 400 bicycles they break even no profit no loss and using the same selling price of 500 variable expenses of 300 the um, the profit when they sell 600 bicycles, $40,000. So that's the information we use to create our graph. Now let's take a look. In a CVP graph, unit volume is usually re represented on the x-axis or the horizontal axis. So you see it says units there. So this is what we're saying, that when these number of units are sold, the y-axis represents the dollars. Okay, so that's first. Units across the X, volume uh, dollars across up, up and down on the Y. We then draw a line parallel across to represent fixed expenses. So it doesn't matter what amount you produce across the bottom, fixed expenses will always be eighty thousand dollars at each unit amount. So we have a straight line. The next thing we do is choose some sales volume, say 400, and plot the point representing total expenses. Total expenses are your fixed amount plus your variable amount. So at 400 units being sold, the fixed amount is still 80,000. The variable amount would be 120. Total expenses are 200. And you could see that is plotted directly above the 400 units. At 300 units, fixed is still 80,000. Variable is 130, it looks like. Together, nope, I'm, I'm wrong. 80, and it looks like it's about 100 and 175 maybe. I'd have to do the calculations. But we would take the 300 units times the variable expense of 300 per unit. That's 90,000. 90,000 plus the 80,000 in fixed would be 170,000. 
And that's what you would do for each one of these, total variable plus fixed. And you can see we have a linear, a line, but it's sloping. So our expenses increase as the volume of items increase. The next plots our sales. So when zero products are sold, there's a zero sales revenue. When 100 products are sold, there's a 50,000 sales revenue. When 200, 200 times 500, we have a $100,000 sales revenue. So the green line represents the total sales revenue at each unit sold. Now, where the variable, ex or I'm sorry, the total expense and the sales intersect, that is the point of break even in units and dollars. It's saying that's the point where total expenses equal total sales. And if you think about it, sales minus total expenses gives us our operating income. So at 400 units or $200,000 in sales, that is where you break even. If an amount, so for any units produced above 400, you can see going, um, continuing to go up and you see it's, there's an arrow pointing, that's your profit area. So that's all profit within this triangular section. If it goes the opposite, so if you produce less than 400, or say sell, I'm sorry, but sell less than 400 units, you're going to not um, necessarily, you'll be having less in profit, but once you're Well, 300 units, right? Just give me a second. No, so your expenses will be greater than your sales below the 400, and you are actually occurring a loss. So that's our key there. At what point will sales allow us to have a zero profit? That's our break even. And that's how it looks graphically. Any amount above 400 units produces a profit. Any amount below 400 units produces a loss. Now, an even simpler form of the CVP graph is called the profit graph. And it just says, let's plot, plot the profit at each point, the unit contribution margin, so the 200, 500 sale per unit minus 300, variable expense per unit, 200 times the quantity minus the fixed costs gives us profit. So what is that saying here? Well, if we produce 300 bikes, I keep saying produce, I apologize, the number of bikes sold because it's based on sales. So if we sell, 300 bikes, the contribution margin per bike is 200. That will give us $60,000 of contribution margin, 300 times 200. Our fixed costs are 80,000. So if you look directly above the 300 bikes sold, what's our profit? Negative 20,000. However, if we sell 500 bikes, times the contribution margin per unit of 200, that will give us $100,000 of contribution margin. Subtract our fixed cost of 80,000, that allows for a positive $20,000. So we're graphing our profit at each level of units sold. And that's what this profit graph is um, illustrating to us. The break-even point is where the profit is zero.
and you could see that's at the 400 units. So it's just another way to depict break even. So we like to use graphs to see this information. Now we're going to look at some more computations. We're going to use the contribution margin ratio, that CM ratio, to compute changes in contribution margin and net operating income from changes in sales volume. So we're back to our contribution income statement. Now we've seen it for a total. We've seen our contribution margin per unit. We can also convert our contribution margin by a percentage. So how do we do that? Well, if sales are considered 100%, 500, $500 per unit, what percentage is variable expenses of the sales? So if you take 300, Divided by the sales of 500, 60% of the sales amount goes to pay variable expenses. So you have to pay those in order to sell the product. And they are variable. So they change as they'll increase or decrease by the same amount when sales increases or decreases. So what percentage is the contribution margin of total sales? Well, if you use it on a per unit, you could take your contribution margin per unit of 200 and divide it by the sales amount of 500 or 40%. In this illustration, they took the 100,000 in total contribution margin divided by 250,000 in total sales, which will give you the same result. So what this is saying is each $1 increase in sales will result in a contribution margin increase of 40 cents or 40% of the dollar in sales. So another way to show contribution margin as a ratio. The contribution margin ratio at Racing Bicycle, then, is 40%. And that's what we were just looking at. Now, Racing Bicycle increases sales from 400 to 500 bikes, or $50,000. 100 bikes times $500. Contribution margin, therefore, we could predict will increase by the 40% times the 50,000 increase in sales from the additional 100 bikes being sold. And that's how we could use this 40%. Now we could go the long way and prove it. So when 400 bikes are sold, we're at break even. When 500 bikes using our contribution income statement, do our calculations using 500 as the sale price, 300 as the variable expenses, leads us to a $20,000 profit. So this is a quicker way to show what happens to contribution margin dollar-wise when the volume of sales increases or decreases by using our contribution margin ratio. So let's do a quick check. Coffee Clash is an espresso stand in downtown office building. The average selling price of a cup of coffee is $1.49 and the average variable expense per cup is 36 cents. The average fixed expense per month is $1,300. An average of 2,100 cups are sold each month. What is the CM ratio for coffee clutch? So, I don't have my calculator with me. I came up where I am recording this, I forgot to bring it. But what we would do is take the $1.49 selling price minus the $0.36, cents, and that would give us a $1.13 of contribution margin. Take the $1.13 of contribution margin and divide it by the 1.49, and that will give B. 
0.758. So what that's saying is, and think about this, for each $1 increase in sales, contribution margin increases 0.758 cents. And that's how we would use this. Now, the relationship between profit and the contribution margin ratio can be expressed using an equation. Profit equals your contribution margin ratio, which is really the percentage of sales that remains in the contribution margin. 40% of the sales are contribution margin. So we multiply those by sales. Minus the fixed expenses, it will give us our profit. So if sales are 250,000 times 40%, your contribution margin will be 100,000 minus the 80,000 in fixed costs gives you a profit of $20,000. In learning objective four, we're going to show the effects on net operating income of changes in variable costs, fixed costs, selling price, and volume. And if you haven't noticed, we've got a lot of slides here. We're at 33 of 97. So let's get to it. the very exp variable expense ratio. That's our first ratio we'll look at is the ratio of variable expenses to sales. So before we said what percentage is contribution margin of total sales by taking the contribution margin per unit dollar wise divided by sales. Well, the variable expense ratio is the same type of calculation, but now we're trying to figure out what percentage our variable expenses of total sales. So take the $300 variable expense per unit divided by the sales of 500, 60%. So what is the profit impact if racing bicycle can increase unit sales from 500 to 540 by increasing the monthly advertising budget by 10,000? So now we want to know what happens when we increase unit price and fixed costs? Well, according to our contribution income statement, 540 units will produce sales of 270,000. 540 times $300 variable expense per unit will give us total expenses of 162. That gives us a contribution margin of 108. But we also increased fixed costs for the advertising by an additional 10,000. So even though we increased sales, we also increased our expenses. So the net operating income will be 18,000. Sales increased by 20. Contribution margin increased by 8. Fixed expenses increased by 10, though. So net income decreased by 2. So a shortcut solution can be used using incremental analysis. What does this mean? Well, let's just determine the increase in contribution margin when additional units are sold. 40 additional units, one from 500 to 540, would produce more contribution margin of 8,000. So if nothing happened to the fixed expenses, profit would have increased by 8,000. But because there was an increase in the fixed expenses, we added more in expenses of 10,000. We actually decreased income because there's $2,000 more in additional expenses than there was before. What is the profit impact if racing bicycle can use higher quality raw materials, thus increasing variable cost per unit by $10? And they increase their unit sales from 500 to 580. So now we're looking at variable cost changing. Again, still selling them for $500 each times 580 units, 170, I'm sorry, 290,000. But now the variable expenses will increase to $310 per unit. 
580 sold times 310 variable cost per unit gives us total variable expenses of 179,800. When we subtract that, our contribution margin now is at 110,200. Subtract our fixed expenses of 80,000, they don't change. Net operating income is now at 30,200. So let's see what happens. Um, I thought we were going to go to another slide, but essentially what we need to account for is those higher variable expenses. They will lower our contribution margin if our sale price does not change. What is the profit impact if they cut its selling price by $20, increase its monthly advertising budget by 15 and change the sales on the products from 500 to 600 bikes per month? So now we're changing a whole bunch of stuff. 650 bikes are sold, $500 each. Total sales revenue, $312,000. So sales increased by $62,000. Variable expenses are still $300 a bike times $650, $195,000. Subtract that, your contribution margin is at $117,000. Fixed expenses are going to increase $15,000 from $80,000 to $95,000. When that occurs, contribution margin of 117 minus the 95 will lead to net profit of $22,000. Now, if you take a look at this and think about it, um, sales increased by 62,000, fixed expenses increased by 15,000, Operating income only increases by 2,000 when these changes are made from the original item. I'm sorry, the sales would be 650 sold times the new sale price of 480. If I said 500 before, I apologize, I meant 480. So what's the profit impact if RBC pays a $15 sales commission per bike sold instead of paying salespeople a flat salary that currently totals $6,000 per month? And they increase unit sales from 500 to 575 bikes. Whoa, so now we got a whole you know, new items in this equation. Let's take a look. First of all, sales are still going to be at $300 or $500 each. 575 bikes sold times $500 each, 287,500. Now, they decide instead, we're going to change the variable expense per unit by $15 because we're going to pay the salespeople a commission based on the number of bikes they sold, $15 per bike. So, new variable cost per unit, 315 times the 575 bikes gives us 181, 125. Subtract that from our sales with 575 bikes, contribution margin will be at 106, 375. But something else you need to remember, the fixed expenses decrease when we make the sales commission change. Before we paid our salespeople a fixed $6,000 a month for selling bikes. We changed that. Now we're paying them $15 a bike. So their variable expense increase, but fixed expenses decrease by 6,000. And when that occurs, our net operating income will now be at $32,375. Or when we make these changes, profit increases to 12,375. So we're just demonstrating how these different changes will affect profit and how you put them into play. What if there's a change in the regular sale buys? They have an opportunity to sell 150 bikes to a wholesaler without disturbing sales to other customers or fixed expenses. What price would it quote to the wholesaler if it wants to increase monthly profits by 3000? So 3,000 bikes or $3,000 is the amount of profit they want to make. Fixed costs aren't 
affected by this. There aren't any additional fixed expenses because of these bikes being sold. So the um, first calculation is how much profit do they want to make per bike? $20 per bike. They always have to pay variable cost per bike. Remember those increase as sales increase. So the $300 per bike has to be covered in the sale price. If they want to make a $3,000 profit, they have to um, make, they'll be making $20 per bike if they sell 150. So they would add those two amounts together and the selling price they would have to charge is $320. Now, if you take a look at this, 150 bikes times 320 would um, result in sales revenue of 48,000. The variable costs are 300 per bike. 300 times 150 is 45,000. The increase in your operating income, $3,000. So those were all different ways that you can um, manipulate sales, sales per unit, variable cost per unit, contribution margin, fixed expenses to determine what would be the outcome if those things change. Now, we talked about this idea of break-even point. We're going to go into it a little bit further now. Remember, the equation and formula methods can be used to determine unit sales and dollar sales needed to achieve a target profit of zero. So we're going to go back to our bike example. And there's our contribution income statement. Total dollars, if 500 bikes are sold, per unit contribution margin and contribution margin ratios. So we define them in a couple different ways. So if we take profits, and we already seen this, they equal unit contribution margin times quantity minus our fixed expenses. If we want a zero profit, which is break even, and we know the contribution um, margin per unit is $200. And we know our fixed expenses are 800. We have to plug them into our equation here to determine how many units, how many Q we want to solve for Q. So the first thing you want to do, it's algebra. Move your 80,000, add your 80,000 on the right side and on the left side of your equation. So $200 times Q, 80,000 equals, I mean, $200 times Q. We want to divide $200 on the right side and then divide the $200 to the 80,000 on the left side. Solve for Q, 400 bikes. So here's where algebra comes into our everyday lives. You wonder where it would be. Here's one example of it. So in our equation, profit equals unit contribution margin times quantity minus fixed expenses. We plug in the knowns, solve for Q to determine our quantity. Now we're going to apply the formula method to solve for the break-even point. Unit sales to break-even equals fixed expenses divided by contribution margin per unit. Isn't that what we just did? Right? But we, we had to manipulate that other formula around. And in the end, we could have just used this formula. Take your fixed expenses, so the total amount of expenses you have to cover, divide that by your contribution margin per unit, and that will tell you how many units you need to sell to reach a zero profit. Break even in dollars. Suppose Racing Bike wants to compute the sales dollars required to break even. Let's use the equation method to solve this problem. Solve for the unknown of sales. Profit equals contribution margin ratio. So we would have to use our percentage of sales to determine our contribution margin minus fixed expenses solve for sales. 
So 0 equals 40% times sales minus fixed expenses of 80,000. Here comes that algebra again. 40% of sales equals 80,000. Sales equals 80,000 divided by 40%. So to break even in dollar sales, sales equals 200,000. Well, just like before, there's an easier way. To determine dollar sales, to break even, take your fixed expenses divided by your contribution margin ratio. Ratio. Not dollar amount, but ratio. So if you take the fixed expenses here of 80,000, divide it by 40%, that gives you the total dollars of sales you need to break even. So you could do any of these calculations as long as you know your sales per unit minus variable costs per unit and your contribution margin per unit and then your ratios. So Coffee Clatch is an espresso stand in a downtown coffee bill office building. Again, the average selling price of a cup of coffee is $1.49. The average variable expense per cup is $36. We determined that before, $1.13. Average fixed um, expense per month is $1,300. An average of 2,100 cups are sold. What is the break-even in sales dollars? $1,715. So if we take the dollar thirteen contribution margin divided by sales of a dollar forty nine, our contribution margin ratio is 0.758. We did that before. Take fixed expenses of thirteen hundred divided by 0.758, you would need to have total sales of seventeen hundred fifteen dollars to break even. Same information, but what's the break even in units? Well, now we'll take $1,500 of fixed costs divided by the contribution margin per unit, which would be $1.13 per cup. 1,150 cups would have to be sold to break even. So we're just using these formulas to, in different scenarios to determine units to break even, sales dollars to break even. Now, if we can do that to break even, we can also determine total sales dollars and units to achieve a certain profit. So we can compute the number of units Oops. The number of units that must be sold to attain a target profit using either our equation method, profit equals contribution margin times quantity minus fixed costs, or the formula method. Here's our equation. Profit equals unit, contribution margin times quantity minus fixed expenses. Our goal is to solve for the unknown Q which represents the quantities that must be sold to attain the target profit. So, let's say they want to earn a $100,000 profit. Profit is 100,000, contribution margin per unit is 200, fixed costs are still 80,000. So all those other elements remain the same. Using algebra, 200 times Q equals 100 minus 80. Q Q equals 100 plus 80 divided by 200. Q equals 900. So if you wanted to use this um, equation, you can to determine the number of units to sell to earn a profit of 100,000. And you could test it in your contribution income statement. Now the formula says, okay, what units of sales do I have to attain 
to reach my target profit. Well, before we just, for break even, we just said fixed expenses must be covered. So we have to sell enough units so that our contribution margin in total will cover all the fixed expenses. Well, now, not only do we want to cover our fixed expenses, but we also want to earn a target profit. So we have to add that in our numerator. So if we do that here, 100,000 plus the fixed expenses of 80 divided by the $200 contribution margin per unit, unit sales are 900. So it's a more straightforward approach using the formula instead of the other equation. So here we're determining the number of units we have to sell. Okay, so you could use either, and that's what they're saying. If we want to use, if we want our goals to solve for the unknown sales, so how much in sales dollars do we have to produce to achieve a $100,000 profit? So again, profit equals contribution margin ratio times sales, just like before, minus fixed expenses. So 100,000 is our profit, 40% is our CM ratio, contribution margin ratio, times we have to solve for sales minus our fixed expenses of 80. So 40% of sales equals 100,000 plus 80. Sales equals 100,000 plus 80 divided by 40%. So the company would have to achieve a total sales amount of $450,000 to make a target profit of 100,000. So that's the equation method and using contribution margin ratio to determine sales dollars. In this next one, we're going to calculate using the formula, which is very similar to what we did before. Take the target profit plus fixed expenses divided by your contribution margin ratio. More direct, you get your dollars in sales of 450000 So either way will lead you to the correct answer. It's just what you prefer, the equation method or the formula method. So again, to coffee class, they want to know how many cups of coffee if they use the formula method to attain a target profit of $2,500 per month. So target profit plus fixed expenses, $2,500 plus $1,300 divided by the unit contribution margin of $1.13, 3,363 cups would need to be sold. Now we're going to do the same calculation, but how much in sales dollars must be made to have a profit of $2,500? Target profit plus fixed, plus fixed expenses divided by our contribution margin ratio. So when you're trying to find dollars, you're going to use the ratio. When you're using the, when you're trying to determine units, you use the contribution margin per unit. So 2,500 plus 1,300 divided by the 0.758, which we've already shown how to determine. So $5,013 in sales would need to be made to reach a target profit of $2,500. Okay, so this is um, the cost volume profit analysis and um, determining how much in units we could we have to sell to break even, how much in total sales we have to have to break even or attain a certain profit. In learning objective seven, we're going to compute a margin of safety and explain its significance. So we're going to use these items that we've just learned to do. Let's take a look. The margin of safety in dollars is the excess of budgeted or actual sales over the break-even volume of sales. Okay, so it depends on what you want to look at. You could say total sales. So how much more did we make in total sales than we needed to to break even? Or how much more do we have budgeted in total sales than the break-even sales? That's what you're looking at here.
That's your margin of safety. So we determine break even to be 200. If actual sales are 250,000, the margin of safety is $50,000. RBC's margin of safety can be expressed then as 20% of sales. 50,000 was the additional amount of sales above break even divided by $250,000 in actual sales. Their margin of safety is 20% of sales. The margin of safety can be expressed in terms of the number of units sold. So the margin of safety at RBC is 50,000, the difference in sales, and each bike sells for $500. So their margin of safety is 100 bikes, the difference between what they actually sold and break even. So let's go back to the coffee clutch. What is their margin of safety expressed in dollars if they sell an average of 2,100 $2, cups each month? Well, they sell 2,100 cups. Their break even in cups are 1,150. We figured that out before. So 900 cups. Sorry, I hit it quick. <laughs> okay, so we got a lot of stuff in this chapter, right? Oops, okay. Now, cost structure refers to the relative proportion of fixed and variable costs in an organization. Well, that's your two major costs, fixed and variable. So those two make up your cost structure. Managers often have some latitude in determining their organization's cost structure. For instance, there are advantages and disadvantages to having high fixed costs or low variable and low fixed costs are high variable. An advantage of a high fixed cost structure is that income will be higher in good years compared to companies with lower proportion of fixed costs. A disadvantage of a high fixed cost is that income will be lower in bad years, so when you're selling less. Companies with low fixed cost structures enjoy greater stability in income across good and bad years. So it's very important that we understand and, and assign our costs appropriately as they're either being fixed or variable because these are some of the advantages and disadvantages that can result if we don't. I believe this is our last one. Computing the degree of operating leverage at a particular level of sales and explain how it can be used to predict changes in net operating income. Now remember what we're talking about the leverage of our cost. Operating leverage is a measure of how sensitive net operating income is to percentage changes in sales. So it is a measure at any given level of sales of how a percentage change in sales volume will affect profits. How do we determine the degree of operating leverage? We take our contribution margin amount divided by our net operating income. Let's go back to RBC. When RBC's contribution margin is 100,000, that's our numerator, we divide it by our net income, 20,000. So the degree of operating leverage is five. Now, what does that mean? With an operating leverage of five, if RBC increases sales by 10%, net operating income would increase by 50. So let's take a look. Sales go from, um, or I'm sorry, they increase, or I'm sorry, 10% increase in sales. 10% of 250,000 is 25,000. So there's our increase in sales. 275,000. Variable expenses are calculated based on the new number of units, 550. How do we get 550? Well, if we increase sales by 25,275, 275 divided by $500 per bike 
would give us 550 bikes. Now take the 550 bikes times the 300 variable expenses, and then we would get our contribution margin. Subtract our fixed expenses of 80,000. We get a new net operating income of 30. And that's right. If sales increase by 10%, according to our operating leverage, net income will increase by 50. And it did. 20,000 times 50% is 10,000. New net income, 30,000. So the formula gets us there quicker than going through this whole workup. But we're showing you this to show to prove it really does happen that way. So here's Coffee Clash again. And because of time, let's take a look. They increase sales, um, actual sales, I'm sorry, at 3129. Variable expenses would total 756, fixed expenses are 1300, net operating income is at 1073. So what is their operating leverage? Well, contribution margin divided by net operating income of 1073, 2.21. So if sales increase by 20%, how much should net operating income in well, 20% times 2.21, 44.2. And there's a, your verification of profit. Now, what about sales commission? I know we're kind of like going off somewhere else, but companies generally compensate salespeople by paying them either a commission based on sales or a salary plus sales commission. Commissions based on sales dollars can lead to lower profits in a company. So we gotta be careful when we're structuring sales commission. Pipeline Unlimited produces two types of surfboards, the XR5 and the Turbo. XR5 sells for 100, generates a contribution margin per unit of $25. So the variable expenses then are 75. Turbo sells for 150, and earns a contribution margin per unit of $18. So the variable expenses are $132. Salesforce is compensated based on sales commission. What does this mean? If you were on the Salesforce of Pipeline, you would push hard to sell the Turbo, even though the XR7 earns a higher contribution margin per unit. Why? Because your commission is based on sales sales dollars. To eliminate this type of conflict, commissions can be based on contribution margin rather than on selling price alone. So that's one way to alleviate that problem with how do we determine sales commission? The final objective. Compute the great break even point, whoa, for a multi-product company. So now we're kicking it up a notch and explain the effects of shifts in the sales mix on contribution margin and the break-even point. So that's just like in our last example. Now they're selling two products, they have different contribution margins, they bring in different sales revenue. So a sales mix is the relative proportion in which a company's products are sold. Different products have different selling prices, cost structures, so variable and fixed costs, and contribution margins. When a company sells more than one product, break-even analysis is more complex. Let's take a look at an example. Now our bike company sells bikes and carts. Here's the bicycles. They give us the sales and the contribution margin ratio. Here's the carts and the contribution margin ratio. So if we look at this in total, um, total sales are 550,000. Total variable costs, add those two together, 285. Contribution margin is 265. Their fixed expenses are 170. That would lead to a net operating income of 95,000. What's the total contribution margin? So for all of them, for both of them together, 265 divided by the 550, 48.2. 
So the total dollars that are needed to break even would be the 170 in fixed expenses divided by 48.2, or 352,697. Now, um, how much of each would need to be sold? Well, the sales mix would be, sorry, that should be 40, I believe. Let me see. Nope, 45. 45% would be allocated to the bicycle. 55% are allocated to the carts. So the total um, dollar sales to break even would be 352,697. Okay, so it's more of a complex calculation when you're selling more than one product, but we just want to introduce it to you a little bit. So finally, we made it to the end. It only took us an hour, right? But what a great chapter on cost, volume, profit analysis and how we go about determining sales we need, units we need to sell, when sale price may change, variable cost may change, fixed expenses may change, we want to break even, we want to make a profit, and the different formulas that we can use to quickly get to those numbers. So these are tools we use in accounting, in our companies, to determine these various items. So post any questions you may have to the discussion board, and I'll be getting our practice problems ready very soon.